tonight, the, the service of being in the mood of Good Friday, it will be a quieter service. And when we leave tonight, um, we'll have a benediction and, and go in silence. And it will be a long silence because we continue the silence through Holy Saturday. But don't give up. Um, Sunday, there will be more ahead. I sort of think you may know the story, but we're going to enter into the mood of Good Friday this day. So I invite you to join me in our call to worship. As the sun gives way to darkness, the shadows of death are upon us. This evening brings us to the final scenes of Jesus' journey to the cross. Our Savior has broken the bread of life and poured the cup of salvation. Tonight, his body will be broken and his life poured out. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. We come with Christ to Calvary this night to remember the saving death of our teacher and friend. We linger in this dark hour, waiting for its story, trusting that death will not have the final word. On the hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the end of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish and cross, gave old rugged cross, till my foot is at last I lay down. I will cling to the cross, the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to the Calvary. So I'll cherish the cross, the old rugged cross, till my birth is at last I lay down. I will cling to the cross, the old rugged cross, and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, Stained with blood so divine, our wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the cross, the old rugged cross, till my burden at last I lay down. I will 
come to the cross again tonight. We come to simply hear the story and to ponder again your great love and the great cost for salvation. God, we come somber and heavy-hearted because it's always hard to hear the story of the Jesus we love so much giving his life. But it also feels like we are living in a Good Friday world at the moment. It is hard in this time of COVID-19 to be separated and to be isolated. It is hard as a church family to be grieving the loss of a dear friend and Kathy Warren. So God, we pray for those tonight who feel lonely, who feel heavy hearted. We ask for your comfort and care upon those who grieve. We ask in this time that you be with those important workers such as doctors and nurses, people who or custodians and keep things clean and sanitized. We ask for your blessing on truck drivers who are doing long times on the road to bring us the essential things we need. We thank you and ask your blessing upon cashier and grocery store workers, pharmacists, construction workers, first responders, police and fire. Lord, thank you for the people who are out so that we can be healthy and safe. We ask that you would just be in the world where there are people who are sick this night, who need your, your healing touch, who need reassurance of your presence. To be with those for whom this disease isn't just a pandemic, but it has struck close to home, taking lives, of those that they've loved. We're holding in the balance right now lives of people that are dear and precious to them. We ask that you would be close. For you are the God who is with us always, especially when we're going through those Good Friday times and moments. May your spirit bless us and speak to us and hold us close as we come again to the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now tonight, we will be hearing the story, and as we hear it, we're going to come to this refrain, and maybe we're going to abandon our, we've got extra writing up on our PowerPoint that we don't want. But it will be this refrain, and some of you may not know the old hymn, Lead Me to Calvary. And so after we hear some gospel 
portions for Mark this evening. There will be silence, which will be a time for you to reflect. But we will keep coming back to this refrain. And I'll sing it through once, and you're muted so you can sing it loud with me the second time and for the rest of the night. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. We'll try it together, I'll sing it lower. Lest I forget Gethsemane, Lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget your love for me, lead me to Calvary. So we start in Gethsemane. This is Mark 14, 32 to 42. Jesus and the disciples went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here. And keep watch. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, this hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Then Jesus returned and found the disciples sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning a third time, Jesus said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinner. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. 
Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, Jesus said, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me? But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled, naked, leaving his garment behind. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Jesus before the Sanhedrin. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed at a distance, going right into the courtyard of the high priest. And there he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy the temple made with human hands, and in three days build another not made with hands. And yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the chief priest, the high priest, stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. And some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him. And they struck him with their fists and said, Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him.
Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Mark 15, Jesus before Pilate. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so. Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. The soldiers mock Jesus. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff, and they spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. And they let him out to be crucified.
Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. The Crucifixion of Jesus. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father, father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who crucified him also heaped insults on him. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. The Death of Jesus At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, Lama Sabathina, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near him heard him say this, they said, listen, he's calling out for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on their staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last.
We go out into the darkness. Yet we know that death is not the end of the story. We go out into the darkness. Yet even now we know, yet we know even in the face of death, hope will come. We go out into the darkness. Yet we know the God of love is always with us. Until we gather again in the fullness of the joy of Easter, go forth in God's peace and shalom in the name of the one who is our source, our savior, and our sustainer. Amen. Amen.